Welcome back to Movie Recaps. Today I will show you a mystery, crime film from 2020, titled Enola Holmes. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. In the outskirts of England, the Holmes family house can be found. The father died many years ago, and the older sons left shortly after, so nowadays the only ones living there are the mother Eudoria, the youngest daughter Enola, and a housekeeper. Enola's name is alone spelled backward because Eudoria is a big fan of word games, and she wants Enola to be able to do well on her own. Enola's never gone farther than the woods that surround the house, never been to the city or even a town, but that's all right because Eudoria has given her all the education she needs, science, literature, sports, even self-defense. The two of them are extremely close, but Eudoria still has some secrets she doesn't share, Enola has found her having secret meetings with other women in the house. On the morning of Enola's 16th birthday, she wakes up to find her mother has left in the middle of the night, only leaving behind a very peculiar gift, a box with a little book about the language of flowers, a decoder, and some card she painted herself. This is why Enola is now going to the train station to pick up her brothers Mycroft and Sherlock, the famous detective, hoping they'll help her find the answers she seeks. It's been years since they've seen each other so the brothers don't recognize her at first, but once introductions are made, things quickly get awkward. Mycroft is incredibly judgmental of the state the house is in and, most importantly, of Enola's lack of lady behavior and manners. Sherlock looks around their mother's room and comes to the conclusion there wasn't foul play, Eudoria left on her own and she wasn't planning to return. Later, Enola overhears her brothers talking while playing billiard. It turns out the house has been Mycroft's, the oldest son, since their dad died, and Eudoria just asked to have it for 16 years to raise Enola. Mycroft hadn't seen Sherlock in months because he never cared about his family, he's only showed up now because there's a mystery to solve. In Mycroft's opinion, the right thing to do is to send Enola to a boarding school so she can learn to be a proper lady. The next day, Miss Harrison arrives. She's a stern teacher hired by Mycroft to break and reshape his sister, and Enola can't stand her. Miss Harrison wants to change her entire personality, and when Enola doesn't hesitate to answer her condescension with strong words, Harrison even slaps her. Enola begs Mycroft for mercy, but he's stuck in his ways, so she asks Sherlock for help instead, but he claims he can't do anything because the law dictates she's Mycroft's ward. Hurt, Enola calls him out for washing his hands on the issue, mentioning he's always ignored how Mycroft can be cruel to their mother too. Needing a distraction, Enola leaves the house to do some sketching on top of a tree. Sherlock finds her and joins her, sharing an anecdote from her childhood that she didn't remember. Enola had a pinecone wrapped in wool called Dash that she dragged everywhere like a dog. Enola calls out Sherlock again, saying he never visits, and when he tries to use the work excuse, she points out he never writes her either. Sherlock calls Eudoria leaving a mystery, which gets on Enola's nerves, but he reminds her not to be emotional if she wants to see the truth. In the evening, Enola takes a new look at her gift to find that truth. Since Eudoria liked word games, Enola begins rearranging the letters on her message and discovers her mother wants her to look at a painting she made. Hidden behind the canvas, she finds an envelope with money and another card painted by Eudoria. Enola takes this as a sign to take this seriously, so she escapes the house in the middle of the night wearing Sherlock's old clothes. She arrives at the train station the next day and notices the noble Tewksbury family looking for their son. They don't board with her, but their employee Lindhorn does. When Enola finds an empty carriage, she discovers she isn't alone after all. From inside a bag comes out a young man who turns out to be Viscount Tewksbury. He paid a porter to sneak him in so he could escape his family, but Enola doesn't care, she doesn't want him to compromise her mission, so she kicks him out after warning him about Lindhorn. However, Tewksbury returns seconds later, worried and scared because he saw Lindhorn checking out every carriage. Enola decides she'd be the one to leave the carriage instead then, but she barely makes it a few steps away before she hears Lindhorn attacking Tewksbury. Feeling guilty about not doing the right thing, she comes back and hits Lindhorn with his cane, stopping him from throwing Tewksbury off the train. Enola catches him just in time and they run through the corridors together, but as she realizes they have no escape, there's only one thing left to do. When the train passes by a grassy area, they jump off the train. Meanwhile, Sherlock is looking around the house for clues again, thinking his sister disappearing is also part of the mystery. The housekeeper calls him out for thinking like that the same way Enola did, and after mentioning the girl left her some money, she asks Sherlock not to abandon his sister again because Mycroft's contacting the police to find her. Back to the teenagers, they agree to go to London together. When the time comes to camp for the night, Tewksbury uses the foraging knowledge his dead father taught him to find some edible plants. While they bond over their weird families and their fears of living a life that isn't suited for them, Enola cuts Tewksbury's hair so he's harder to identify. In the morning, they hitch a ride to London, where they part ways. Having never visited the city, Enola is quite overwhelmed, especially since there are many protesters on the streets chanting in favor or against the reform bill that would allow women to vote, not to mention there are signs everywhere with Tewksbury's face, offering a reward for him. 
Anola decides the first step is to acquire a disguise, and knowing how Mycroft would have described her to the cops, she decides the perfect disguise is proper lady clothes. In the meantime, Sherlock has turned down the case of Tewksbury's disappearance because he wants to find his mother and sister. Ignoring Mycroft's protest against that decision, Sherlock finds a clue in the news of two boys jumping off the train. After acquiring lady clothes and renting a room for her stay in London, Anola begins working on the next step of her plan. She publishes some cryptic messages in the newspaper personal advertisements, then visits the only address Anola's ever seen Eudoria write to, a tea house. Once there, she hears some weird noises coming from the first floor and goes upstairs to check it out. This is how she finds Edith's Jiu-Jitsu Academy for Women. Edith had been Anola's first teacher, and while Anola doesn't remember her from those days, she does realize Edith is one of the women that attended Eudoria's secret meetings. Edith refuses to share information about the kind of work Eudoria is involved in so Anola tries to get it out of her by force, but she fails to do the special corkscrew move and Edith easily defeats her. Before leaving, Anola sees a box full of dynamite with a logo that matches the box that was at her house during Eudoria's secret meetings. Remembering some weird words she heard during those meetings, Anola rearranges the letters and obtains an address she wastes no time visiting. The door she finds has a purple ribbon on its lock, matching the ones the women at the meeting wore. Anola sneaks inside through the window and finds a lab, pamphlets, and boxes full of explosives that make her realize Eudoria is the leader of a radical group of suffragettes. On her way out, she's attacked by Lindhorn, who pushes her inside a bucket of water to make her confess Tewksbury's whereabouts. Since he doesn't believe her when she says she doesn't know, Anola pretends to drown, then attacks Lindhorn when he's distracted. The two of them begin to fight, but when Anola fails the corkscrew again, Lindhorn pushes her into the lab and tries to stab her with a knife. Anola's corset saves her from death. So then she uses the chemicals on the table to ignite the explosives and escape. Now she knows Lindhorn is in London, Anola feels a responsibility to warn Tewksbury. Disguised as a widow, she travels to his family's estate and tells them she's Sherlock's assistant. Tewksbury's mother almost believes it, but unfortunately, Inspector Lestrade, a close friend of Sherlock's from Scotland Yard, is there and calls out her lie. They begin to argue so Tewksbury's mother kicks them out. Once outside, Anola asks the gardener about Tewksbury's favorite places and pays him to swap clothes with her. Meanwhile, Sherlock finds Edith too, thanks to some letters Eudoria had hidden in her chimney. Edith tells him Anola is fine but refuses to give him any more information, pointing out Sherlock doesn't understand how important their work is. When he explains he thinks politics are boring, Edith calls him out as another man that isn't interesting in changing a world that suits him so well. Mycroft is having a little meeting of his own too, Lestrade finds him to confirm the girl he saw was his sister, and Mycroft promises a good reward if he catches her. Back to Enola, she goes into the forest and finds Tewksbury's treehouse, where he's left some fake clues about his destination in order to confuse his family. However, she also finds a clue in a book about the real location, but her investigation is interrupted by Tewksbury's grandmother, the Dowager. The lady guides Enola out of the forest while talking about how proud she is to have been given a part of England's glory and ideals to protect. She calls Enola a new thinker, pointing out that her son and grandson are the same. Next, Enola goes to Covent Garden, where she finds Tewksbury selling flowers. She warns him about Lindhorn and takes him away with her, unaware that signs with her face are now on the streets too. When they make it to the hotel, Anola tells Tewksbury that she saw clues in the forest indicating that his father's death hadn't been an accident but murder, and now they want to kill the son too for greedy reasons. Their conversation is suddenly interrupted by Lestrade, who has come over after the seamstress Anola bought the dress from snitched on her for the reward. After throwing a teapot at Lestrade, Anola takes Tewksbury to her room, where they try to keep the door closed with a chest. It won't hold long though, so Enola sacrifices herself and tells Tewksbury to escape through the window, because his death is much worse than her being sent to a boarding school. Tewksbury escapes safely while Enola is captured and sent to Mycroft, who takes her money and yells at her, leaving her in tears. At the boarding school, Enola doesn't really fit in, hating every class consisting of how to be a proper lady and get a husband. At nights, her room is always kept locked by Miss Harrison, who likes to remind Enola her mother abandoned her and never truly cared for anything besides her cause. One afternoon, Anola is visited by Sherlock, who tells her he's found Edith in the lab but not Eudoria yet. Anola yells at him, tired of being treated like a clue, so Sherlock confesses he does care for her, which earns him some teasing from Anola for being unusually emotional. Sherlock also knows about her involvement in the Tewksbury's case, but the real reason he came over is to give Anola old dash, which Eudoria had kept under her pillow. This is the proof Anola needed to be sure her mother does care. Before leaving, Sherlock leaves Anola today's paper, which talks about the Lord's voting soon. She's starting to see a clue when she's interrupted by a delivery sent by Mycroft, a giant, heavy basket. When she opens it, she finds Tewksbury there, who came to save her. Anola hides inside the basket and Tewksbury takes her out of the room only to be found by Miss Harrison, so Tewksbury uses the Mycroft lie again and says this is a gift he sent Harrison to only be opened in private. 
The basket is taken to Harrison's office, and when she goes there later to open it, she only finds a silly cartoon Enola has left her. It turns out Enola has escaped through the window, and after meeting Tewksbury outside, they escape in Harrison's car. They're supposed to return to London, but Enola decides that to solve this case they to take a risk and confront Tewksbury's family. She's sure the culprit behind this is the uncle, who wants Tewksbury's seat at the voting because the son, just like his father, is planning to vote in favor of the reform. Night has fallen by the time they make it to the mansion. Surprisingly, there's nobody around, which means they're expected. Lindhorn suddenly appears and opens fire with a rifle, so the duo hides behind statues. When Lindhorn comes closer, Anola jumps on him to attack him, but Lindhorn knocks her out. Tewksbury attacks him next but also fails, so Lindhorn gets ready to kill him by asphyxiation. Fortunately, Anola then wakes up and attacks again, finally pulling off the corkscrew move that causes Lindhorn to fall and hit his head against the banister, dying after saying he works for England. At that moment, the real culprit shows up, the Dowager. She killed her son and now wants her grandson gone too in order to protect the country's traditions. The Dowager shoots Tewksbury and Anola cries over his body, believing him to be dead, but actually, he's just fine. Tewksbury had put on a piece of armor from one of the statues while Anola was fighting Lindhorn. Seeing herself surrounded, the Dowager surrenders. The next day, Sherlock visits Lestrade to tell him he's discovered the Dowager is the culprit, which he figured out by following some clues from the newspapers. Lestrade informs him Anola's already solved the case, which makes Sherlock proud. Meanwhile, Anola receives an offer from Tewksbury and his mother to stay with them, but she turns it down because she must keep on looking for Eudoria, although she does accept the reward money. After promising Tewksbury that they'll see each other again in the future, Anola buys the newspaper and finds a cryptic message that is signed as mother. She quickly guesses this is a trap from Sherlock but goes to the meeting place anyway, keeping her distance while watching her two brothers wait for her. Mycroft, who is in a bad mood because Tewksbury's vote has helped the reform be accepted, quickly gives up and accepts Sherlock's offer to make Anola his ward before asking to leave. On their way out, Sherlock sees Dash on a nearby statue and knows his sister has been there all along. When Anola returns to the new hotel she's staying at, she finds a huge surprise in her room, Eudoria is there waiting for her. The two of them hug and Eudoria explains she didn't leave because she didn't care, she left because she wanted to make a better world for her daughter. She'll soon leave again to keep on fighting, but she tells Anola she's proud of everything she's done. Anola is fine with this because now she's found her own purpose, just like her mother and her brothers did, she'll be a detective and a finder of lost souls. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.